Hi there, in this tutorial I'm just going to show you how to make this biohazard symbol here. The uh, symbol itself is actually quite complicated in form but pretty easy to make. Um, so yeah, and after that what I'll do is I'll actually just quickly show you how to make this sign which I've got it on as well and throw in the texture and everything. Cool, so yeah, let's get to it. Alright, so the first part we're going to make is a little little shape which I call like a stamp out kind of shape. We're going to use this to stamp out a shape from the overall um, end product. Um, we'll also use this to uh, kind of kind of as a guide to where our centers and everything are going to line up to. So I'm um, making sure that we only have a black as a fill and no stroke set. We're going to come up and we're just going to make a circle by circling the ellipse tool. And just come in anywhere in the page, roughly in the center, hold Alt and Shift and just draw out a circle like so. Now this shape here is going to be the little circle with the um, little lines which break up the um, inside part of the biohazard symbol. So off the circle we're just going to draw some little rectangles. Um, I'm just going to click in place and that should bring up a little sizing thing. I'm going to make it 10 pixels in width and it just doesn't really matter how high it is, we'll just do that and press OK. And then just select your uh, pointer tool and we'll select the both of them. Now if you come over to the side here you should have a little dialog box called a line. If you don't have this you can also come up and find it in your windows and just make sure that one's ticked there. Or when you have the pointer tool um, on and you've got a couple of shapes selected generally all the alignment options come up at the top. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to center both of them and then I'm just going to select the little rectangle and we're just going to drop it down so it's roughly on top of the circle like that. Alright, so now that our little rectangle and circle are both vert um, vertically aligned to the centers, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to select the rectangle and we're just going to come over to the side and select our, rectang uh, our rotate tool. Now um, I've got smart guides on, as you can see everything kind of lights up when you select, hover over it. Um, if you don't have smart guides on you can simply press Control U or just come up into your view, drop down here and just make sure smart guides are tick. This just makes things easier to line up and makes symmetrical. Um, so with our rotate tool, we're just going to come down to the center of the circle and holding alt on the keyboard We're just going to click in the center there and I'll bring up our rotate dialog box Now I'm going to want to rotate this rectangle around the circle a couple more times um, To do this uh, what, I, what I'm going to do is just divide the circle up into three so you go 360 divided by three and that will give us 120 And then I'm going to press this copy button. Now the copy button is going to copy this shape rather than rotate this shape around it's going to copy the shape and rotate it around so we hit that and that happens like that now what we're going to do is repeat this transform by um, pressing ctrl d which is transform again and now repeat that same action again from the selected shape that we had so pretty much that's that's our plug for the center of our shape all right so now I'm just going to select all the objects and we're just going to group them all together by pressing Ctrl G so we don't lose their placement and I'm just going to change their color to red just for the time being so we can see where it is. Alright, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the foundation, pretty much the foundations of the symbol uh, using the ellipse tool just inside it and uh, we'll make those black for now and just coming down to the bottom of this shape here with smart guides it should allow you to start drawing from the anchor point at the base of this circle. So just holding shift we're just going to draw a reasonably big circle like so. And then grab our pointer tool and we'll just select the two and we'll vertically align them again. Now I want this shape at the back here to be at the front so I'm just going to click it and then press control shift right bracket so that should bring our shape to the front of that one just so we can see where it is. Uh, next we're going to rotate this circle around twice more like we did with the uh, rectangle um, shape there. Pretty much the same process, we'll just select that circle and grab our rotate tool. And uh, I'm going to rotate it around the center of this shape here. So just holding alt and coming to the center of our little red shape. And we'll just click in there like so. And again rotating it around 120, press copy. And again just pressing Control D to repeat that action like so. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little circle for the top here and I'm going to use that to stamp out the uh, 
what is kind of like the crescent shape in that. So I'm going to select this circle and pressing and Control C, copy it, and Control F to paste it in place. And then just holding the Alt and Shift, I'm just going to shrink that circle down a bit like so. And then just using the arrow keys, I'm just going to punch that one up. It's roughly just over the edge of the top of that one. And I'll make this one yellow just so you can see where it is for now. And we're going to bring that forward by pressing Control Shift, right bracket. All right. So yep, that's looking pretty good. Pretty happy with that. Um, so again, I'm just going to select that circle there and grabbing our rotate tool, coming to the center of this red shape here and hold pressing Alt again. Again, rotating at 120. Just press Copy and then Control D. And you can already start seeing the um, pretty much the basic shape of this uh, biohazard symbol come out. Um, so the next step, pretty much what we're going to do is we're going to stamp out these coloured shapes from the black shapes. But first what we're going to want to do is actually merge all these black shapes together so we don't have any overhanging parts of the circle. Um, so holding shift, I'm just going to select all the black circles like so. And then I'm going to come over to our Pathfinder dialog box. Oops. And just going to hit this merge um, shape mode here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Alt and press that there. Um, I do believe holding Alt is only really required in older versions of Illustrator. I think CS5 and 6 you're yeah, not required to hold Alt. But um, yeah, generally hovering over it will give you a tooltip of what's going to happen. What you want is it to pretty much expand the shape at the same time as merging it all together. Otherwise you're going to have a whole heap of dirty paths left over. If you see the expand button um, highlight after you've pressed that button, go ahead and press it and that should clean up the uh, shape altogether. Alright, so now all those circles are merged together, what we can do is we can select all the yellow ones and then select the uh, black one at the back and then we can come over to this shape mode which is subtract and again holding alt we can click that and it should subtract the yellow circles from the black ones. Um, if you have a bit of trouble with it, try subtracting the circles one at a time rather than selecting them all. Cool, so there you have it, pretty much we've got our the hardest part of the shape done and that's that whole three crescent moons all merged together. So now what we're going to want to do is we're going to select this red one at the back and just pressing control shift right bracket we're going to bring that forward and again we're going to stamp it out from the uh, the black one at the back. But before we stamp out the uh, the red shape from the the black biohazard symbol what we're going to do is we're just going to grab our white pointer tool and I'm just going to select the middle circle here and I'm just going to copy that. Um, I'm going to use this that copied circle later on after I've stamped the uh, red one out and um, pretty much I'm going to use it to make the the uh, inner ring for the symbol. So just copying that one then we can just go ahead and grab our, our black pointer tool and just selecting both of them again and coming up and holding alt we'll just subtract that from there. Now what we can do is press control F and we'll notice our red circle will come back exactly in the place where it was, which is good because that's exactly the center of where our shape is. Now holding Alt and Shift, Alt to uh, transform the circle from the center, Shift to constrain proportions. We're just going to bring that circle out like so. Um, just bring it out to where you think it looks good, like that. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and press Shift X and that's going to swap our full color to the stroke. And then I'm just going to make the stroke a bit thicker, so I'm just going to come up to the top here and we're just going to make that probably about 20 points. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert the stroke into a shape. Um, to do that, all you have to do is hit the shape selected and come to object and go expand. And um, because the shape has no fill, we don't have to expand the fill. We're just wanting to expand the stroke for now. So we're just going to hit, go ahead and press OK. And that should change that into a shape, which is exactly what we want. All right, so now I'm going to want to try and put some gaps in between the circle and the biohazard symbol. Um, this is a bit of a hacked up way of doing it. So you're just going to have to bear with me. This is the easiest way I could think of doing it. But um, pretty much what we're going to do is we're going to copy this black shape, paste it in front, and add a white stroke to it, and then convert that white stroke to an object, and then cut that object out of the circle. I know that sounds all very complicated, but uh, it's the only way I can really think about going ahead and doing that, and keeping it kind of looking good. 
So um, yeah, so we'll go ahead and do that. So now we're just going to select the black shape at the back here, and we're just going to copy it by pressing Ctrl C. Then we're going to paste it in place by pressing Ctrl F, and then we're going to bring that to the front of the entire shape by pressing Ctrl Shift right bracket on your keyboard, and now bring it forward. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a stroke to the shape here, just so we can get something we can stamp out a little gap from here from the circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my stroke dialog box inside here. Um, that should be there by default. If you don't, again, just come up to your window drop down and just make sure it's ticked there. Or press Control F10. So yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to add a stroke that was the same width as the little rectangles that we put in here, which was 10 pixels. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop this down and go to 10 point. 10 point and 10 pixels should be about the same. And as you can see, it's put a great big red stroke around it. Um, we're also going to want to change where that stroke is. At the moment it is aligned to center of the um, edge of the shape. We want to align it to the e um, outside edge. So I'm just going to click this end one here and now push that stroke to the outside. Alright, so now we can go ahead and um, select that shape and what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand the um, stroke so it counts as part of the entire shape. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to come to object and I'm just going to click expand ex expand appearance. If expand appearance isn't there, expand should be. So that way you can just hit that and just go OK. And it should do exactly the same thing. So just go ahead and I'll press expand appearance. And then selecting the red ring at the back, come over and holding alt. I'm just going to click that. And there you have it. Let's go and cut out those edges nice and perfectly. Just like that. All right, so now we can change that red one to black. Oops, just making sure we can change the full color to black like so. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to merge the whole lot together so it's one shape. So I'm just going to stick the entire lot and holding Alt press the Add To button there. There you go. And that's all one shape now. Okay, so that's the hardest bit all done. Um, we've got our symbol going on there. We can just zoom out a bit and have a look at that. Looking pretty cool. So now we're on to the next step. We're going to make a sign out of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw in a triangle, add some color to it, and make a fancy little border and rounded edges on it, and we'll place this in and probably give it a bit of texture or something just to make it look cool. So um, yeah, first step we're going to draw a triangle. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to this side here, and we're going to select the polygon tool. And we're just going to come over and we're going to click on this blank area over here. Now a triangle obviously has three sides, uh, side doesn't really matter, size doesn't really matter at the moment. There you go, and we're just with our pointer tool, clicking that or pressing V on the keyboard, we can then make this bigger, holding Alt and Shift, we're just going to drag that out like so. Um, I'm just going to move this symbol over the side here so we can see what we're doing here. I'll zoom in on that. Alright, so now I'm just going to copy this shape here, Control C, and then paste it in place, Control F, and then just holding the uh, Alt and Shift, just going to shrink that triangle down just a little bit. And I'll make that triangle yellow so we can see where it is. Now, um, obviously the edges don't line up, and um, because we held, held Alt, it should be exactly in centre, but it's kind of not. So what we're going to do is we're just going to visually align this. We're just going to select the yellow triangle, and just using arrows on the keyboard, drop it down so the edges all roughly look uniform. Don't be too worried about how close it all is. It doesn't really matter. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to select this outside triangle and we're going to make the full white and I'm going to add a black stroke to it like so but we want a thicker one on that let's make it roughly about five yep looks pretty good and again selecting this triangle here I'm going to pull a black stroke around that also so what I'm going to do is just going to put five on that like that voila now I'm going to select the inner triangle and we're going to come up to our filter here and select stylize and rounded corners. Now 10 pixels will be good for the inner triangle, press OK. And we're going to do the exact same for the outer triangle, the only difference is we're going to increase the size on the rounded corners, we're going to double it. Now I do this so it actually makes the um, rounded corners actually look uniform. Uh, you'll notice that if you keep it the same it's going to look really out of place. Cool, so now we pretty much have basically the foundations of our sign done. Um, 
might increase the size of the stroke on the inner triangle I'll try 10 and we'll just line that to the inside of the shape like so that's looking a bit better all right so now I'm just going to copy our biohazard shape by pressing ctrl C and just ctrl V and holding alt and shift with our pointer tool shrink that down and just place it roughly in the middle like so all right, we'll stick both our triangles and we'll group them together so they're just one shape and then holding shift stick the biohazard and come up to our line tool and we'll just vertically align those two and yeah that's looking pretty cool all right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a light gradient to the inside triangle so using my white pointed tool or pressing a on the keyboard i'm just going to select that middle triangle like so and we're just going to come up into a gradient one and we'll just start dropping in a gradient I think and we'll get rid of that black and we'll put on there uh, make this one a bit darker like so there you go, so that's looking a bit, a bit cooler, not so bland so yeah all right, I think before we go ahead with the next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand the um, strokes on this one so it allows us to freely resize this object without the um, strokes staying the same size. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ungroup these by pressing Control shift g That should allow us to select them individually. And just selecting one triangle at a time, go Object, Expand Appearance. And the same with the top triangle object. Oh, that one's come up with Expand. That's okay. We'll just press making sure that fill and stroke are tick, we'll just go OK. Cool. So now those should be all expanded and allow us to resize this quite freely without it losing its proportions. There we go, very good. Alright, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a texture mask, well, I'm going to add a transparency mask to this which will allow us to put some textures and stuff into it. So to do that I'm going to have to actually select a lot of them and pressing Control G, group them together. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come over to our transparency dialog box. Again, if you don't have this, you can find it in the window drop down just down here or pressing shift control F10 will bring it up. So coming over to our transparency dialog box, making sure that our grouped shapes are selected, we're going to come to this little drop down menu here and we're going to make opacity mask. And first you're going to notice everything's disappeared. That's okay. Now what we're going to want to do is we're going to add a mask which will reveal and hide certain um, areas or edges of this shape. Actually before we place it we're going to make sure that we have our little black box here selected and we're just going to go file place and I have made a little texture for you guys. This texture will be available for free on my blog so I'll put a link down in the description below. Well we're just going to use this texture here. Just place that in place like so. Now you're going to notice this texture is probably a bit bigger than what we have made so we're just going to hold alt and shift and we're just going to shrink that texture down a little bit like so and maybe rotate it around to give us a bit more of an angle right. you notice that the um, edges of it will actually make it disappear and that's how a mask works might rotate around yeah so you can play around with this as much as you like until you're happy with the result Alright, so before you can, um, you're able to select your shape again, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to come over to this uh, transparency dialog here again and just make sure you select, put the, uh, just click on the little sh um, your object there. Um, switching between the two allows you to edit either either, like, like so. Alright, so just selecting the um, object again, that will allow you to move the object around and the mask should be attached to it as long as that little paper clips on between them. Cool, so that's all done. So there we have it, our finished product. Um, if you found this tutorial helpful, feel free to hit the like button below and uh, subscribe also. I do plan on making a lot more of these. And uh, yeah, have a nice day.